This video is on the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem is just a much easier way to find the remainder. Like you don't even have to do long division. Remember how you did long division and then that very last number was your remainder? There's an even easier way to figure out what that number is without having to do that entire process. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take your polynomial function, p of x, this is your dividend. Then you're gonna divide it by your divisor. Now before we did long division to do that, but again, shorter way. Okay, so let's say that this divisor was x minus three. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the opposite of this number, so a positive three, and sub it into p of x. Everywhere you see an x, you're gonna put a three instead. Then you're gonna solve, and that's gonna be your remainder. Now what happens if you have a more complicated divisor? That's fine. So again, what you're gonna do is take the opposite of this number, you got your three, take the opposite of two multiplying the x, and you're gonna have a division by two. So three over two, take that and sub it wherever you see an x inside p of x. Then you're gonna get your remainder once you simplify. Okay, so I kind of hinted towards that at the end of the last video. With this example, Instead of positive 2, we're going to sub a negative 2 into here, here, and here. So into our p of x, that's right there, p at negative 2, and when I simplify that, I got an answer of 0. That means my remainder is 0. But, I mean, why don't we see it? We already did all the work. We did the long division, and didn't we get a remainder of 0? Well, that was fast. This is a much faster way of doing it instead of having to do this entire process. So why do you ever have to do long division? Well, sometimes the question might ask you, I don't really care about the remainder. I want to know what is your quotient? And you know what? You're going to have to do long division to find your quotient. So sometimes you're going to have to do long division when they ask you for a quotient. And sometimes you can do the shorter way when they ask you for the remainder. Okay, so one more time. This guy right here, if I wanted the remainder, I could always just take the opposite of this number, which is three, and sub it into my x's in brackets, and that's what I did right here. So p of three is equal to 60. So 60 would have been my remainder if I did this entire process as long division. Okay, now I actually wrote down the answer here, and as you can see, 60 positive is my remainder, because that's where we normally write it in this quotient form. Okay, so here's a popular question. Example number three, use the remainder theorem to determine the remainder for each division. Now you don't have to do the long division again. Here is a dividend, and what you're gonna do is it's being divided by the divisor x plus four. So we take the opposite of this guy, negative four, and we sub it into wherever there's an x in the equation. Okay, so I've written that right here, and then I start to solve. So do the exponents first, all right, then you're going to do the multiplication afterwards, multiplication, multiplication, and then add everything together, you should get 153. For proper form, you always want to make sure you don't write p of x because you've already subbed in a negative 4 into each of the brackets. There are no more x's. So make sure that you're writing negative 4 in the front. Okay, now again, everywhere you see an x, you're going to write down the, um, I guess we should say, it's almost like an x-intercept, isn't it? Like where this is going to be equal to zero, you kind of do the opposite of um, the numbers that are inside this bracket. Like technically there are brackets here. So instead of a negative three, you're gonna do a positive three. And then instead of that divide, sorry, multiplying by two, we're gonna do a division by two. So three over two is gonna go into wherever you see an x. Okay, so two x cubed, plus x squared minus 3x minus 6. Once you've subbed in the 3 over 2s, make sure that you do that right there in the front as well. And then you're going to figure out your answer, and this would have been your remainder had you done the long division. This is where the questions get a little bit more complicated, so this is almost like um, an application type of question. Okay, so example number 4. All right, when p of x is equal to all this, notice that there's a k right there. It's gonna be divided by this divisor, and they're already telling you the remainder is negative 12, so they have the answer for you. So determine the value of k. 
If your remainder is negative 12, that means once I sub in the negative 1, wherever there's an x, I'm going to get 12. So p of negative 1 equals to negative 12. So why don't I put that negative 12 right here, because that's where the p of negative 1 would normally go, right? And then what we're going to do is going to write down the equation, but everywhere we see an x, we're going to put a negative 1 instead. Now there only is that k that's left as a variable, and we can solve for it. Okay, so let's simplify everything. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. The negative 1 stays the same. Now multiply the 2 and the negative 1. Multiply the k and the 1. The 3 and the negative 1. And then bring down that negative 2. Then we're going to start to simplify. So put together all of those constants and they make this negative 7. The negative k we'll just put in front. Bring that negative 7 over, it becomes a plus 7, and then put these guys together, negative 5. Now get rid of that negative in front of the k by dividing by a negative 1 on both sides. So k is going to equal to 5. All right, so this is a little bit of um, just an overview of what remainder theorem is. Now this gets really confusing because what happens is people get it mixed up with the next theorem. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video on the next theorem.